guys, Julia here from JM Squared Vintage. Welcome back to the channel. I am here today with a ship with me. These are all orders that came through over the weekend. It was kind of a crazy weekend for me. I had my sister-in-law and niece in town. We had lots of adventures, uh, just a crazy weekend. So we're all trying to like settle down from that. But with that being said, it is Tuesday. And of course I'm running late. I mean, what's new? I'm just trying to catch up on everything after the whole weekend. <clears throat> Lots of really cool pieces sold, some nice bundles. I really can't wait to walk you through like what sold, what I got for it, what I bought it for, how long it sat in my closet, and just kind of talk through some of these brands and how they're doing in my closet. Hopefully it helps you curate what you're picking up for your own. But before we get started, if this is the first time we are meeting, if this is your first time here, first and foremost, welcome. I am Julia, that is my name. We talk all things thrifting and vintage and reselling on the internet. If that sounds like something that you might be into, consider hitting subscribe down below. I would love to have you along on this journey. But without further ado, guys, again, I'm running late, something completely different. So go grab yourself a snack, grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and let's get into the shipment. So we're gonna kick this off with a four piece bundle. It's actually going to one of you. So the first piece here is this beautiful quince linen dress. It's like a midi dress. Guys, if you have not tried quince, this is like in no way sponsored. I need to specify this. I just, I literally, this shirt is quince. I have a lot of these pieces. I'm gonna fold this so it gets to her. I mean, it's linen, it's gonna be, it's gonna be creased, but I want, to, I want it to be the least amount of crease possible. There we go. So I have, I think I found them initially through these linen pants. They started with these like kind of pull on linen pants and I'm a linen pant fanatic, I love them. I've got like five pair, but that's where they kind of got me hooked. And then I was the fisherman sweaters. If you have tried quince before, uh, let me know what your favorite piece is. If not, uh, I urge you to try it. If you're looking for some great basics, you can find them on the secondhand market. Just know that like retail price, say something that's retail price for like $50, you're not gonna get that for like $19. They sell for a good percentage of retail price, but whether you're buying it new or secondhand, I urge you to try it because their stuff is really gorgeous quality. The next piece she picked up was this, oh my God, I love this dress. This is a little Zara scarf print, handkerchief hem wrap dress. I am a sucker for anything scarf print. This is a true wrap dress. How am I gonna fold this? I would love to see the machines that factories use to fold garments like this that don't fold easily. I mean, because they always come, you know, even if, you're, if you've ever worked in a retail store, you know that these things all come individually like poly wrapped and they're flat as can be. They've really mastered the art of like flat packing these things. I think that's actually the term that they use, flat packing. I need to be taught. I need to be taught how to do this. I just, the next piece she picked up and I loved, I knew this was gonna go quick. This is from Sundance. This is a silk linen top in this beautiful like oatmeal color. It is light as a feather and has the most beautiful pin tuck detail. It's just a really beautiful detail. And this feels absolutely positively brand new. Sundance is one of those brands that I absolutely love finding. It's, I, I feel like I'm finding it less and less these days and I don't know why that is. I know I used to find a lot when I would go out in Utah because the Sundance catalog is based in Utah. So they have like a big outlet store there, but out here, you know, I see it here and there and I love it when I do find it because it always goes really quickly and the stuff is super expensive. I also have a little necklace that was part of this bundle that I wrapped separately just because that kind of takes me a little while to wrap it the way I want to wrap it. So I'll put that right on top there. But let me know, do you do you pick up a lot of Sundance stuff? Does it do well for you? I I just, I feel like those pieces, I feel like I've never found a piece from Sundance that's like basic. Everything's really like special. Even when you find like just a t-shirt, you know, it's gonna be t-shirt with like a lace inset and you know, it's just gonna be beautifully made. There's a reason it's so expensive. You know, the stuff is really, really nice. So she picked up some really great pieces. So the total cost of this bundle with like no discount was $137. With my discount, I have an automatic discount for bundles of two or more at 15%. So with my discount, it was 116. She offered me 104, which I gladly accepted. And with a total $3 cost, the necklace I owned, this brought me to a profit of $80.20. And most of them were pretty new, I think, 
all three, like the three clothing items I had just listed within like the last week or two. I hope you absolutely love them. You picked up some great pieces and all three of those I knew would go pretty quick. Those were just some no brainer pickups. Next up, this is a cute little dress from Princess Polly. Now I, Princess Polly is one of those brands that doesn't sell for a particularly high dollar. But when it comes to resell, most of the things that I found from Princess Polly have resold very quickly, albeit just not at a huge number. So if you are able to source at a lower dollar, like if you've got a bins location nearby or if you can access like dollar days and you find some Princess Polly pieces, pick them up. They're, you know, if, if you look on Depop or Curtsy, which is another selling platform, which I've recently started selling on, Princess Polly is one of their biggest selling brands. And it's, you know, it's very trendy. It's very like, you know, again, you're not getting like Sundance catalog quality, but you are getting a trendier piece. And they're pretty well made. Most of the stuff that I picked up, I've been kind of impressed with the construction of them, but this is the kind of thing, you know, this is technically fast fashion. And if we can keep this stuff in circulation, you know, like I, I, I don't, I don't love fast fashion, but if we can find decent quality pieces that are saleable and we can keep them out of that waste stream, I say do it. Like, I'm not gonna pick up like a Forever 21 type thing. I mean, the quality is just not there, you know, like the, I don't feel right reselling it, but Princess Polly, you know, decent quality. So, so this one I did have for about two and a half months. Uh, this is probably the Princess Polly piece that I've had that has sat the longest. It is also the smallest. It was in a size extra small. But I had it listed for $32 and I got an offer for 25, which I did accept. With a $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $22.41. This was a sale on Depop. And as you know, Depop right now is no longer charging seller's fees. So if you are not cross-listing on Depop, I recommend cross-listing on Depop, especially, you know, kind of youth-oriented brands like that and vintage pieces. That's really what kind of shines for me there. You know, anything that is kind of targeted towards like teenagers, college-aged folks, and unique vintage things. Next up here, now this is a dress from Tibby, T-I-B-I. I absolutely love Tibby. Now this was a really unusual dress. It's got this kind of funky neckline. It's a racer back. I wanna say that this is vintage from probably, I wanna say that this is probably like early 2000s. And I think this sat around for a while. I've had this for almost a year, so I was kind of ready to move it on. But look at that like embroidery work on the front. I mean, it's just, it, it's just an unusual dress. So, but I will pick up any Tibby piece that I find. I find their quality to be excellent. Their designs are always like unique and funky and I love selling that kind of stuff. This is 100% silk. It's like a nice lightweight silk crepe or kind of crepe de chine, I should say. It's, it's just an unusual piece. This will be a showstopper. This is one of those dresses that like, somebody will wear this to an event and <laughs> If there's somebody else wearing anything even similar, it would be, you know, a cold day, you know where. So really, really beautiful. Tibby is one of those brands that I've had on my radar for a long time. I remember back in the day, I loved watching What Not To Wear. Ooh, by the way, I just saw an, I just saw an announcement from Clinton Kelly on Instagram because of course I follow him. And it looks like him, Clinton Kelly and Stacey London, if you are not familiar with them, they were hosts of a show called What Not To Wear back in like the early 2000s. And they ambushed people with bad fashion and got them a makeover. And it was always just really fun to watch. I learned a lot about like proportions and textiles and mixing patterns and stuff like that from them. But they just made an announcement. They are coming out with a new show on Netflix called Wear Whatever the F You Want. And I am here for it. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where I'm like, send me there because I have a style that I know that I like, but you know, while I can style everybody else a million ways to Tuesday, I struggle with myself. And I feel like that is the story of everybody's life. Like, let me know down below if you are the same way. Like you can, I can look at somebody and be like, that, that dress is gonna be right for you. But when it comes to dressing my own body, uh, it doesn't quite work that way. But anyway, I just remember, you know, Stacey London has the most incredible style and, 
she always had these gorgeous dresses and I swear like three or four times I went, I went to look up the dresses that she was wearing and they were like always tippy. The ones that I really liked were always this, this designer. So, but they were like three or four hundred dollars. They were very, very expensive. So this one I've had again for about a year and I was ready to move it on. So I had it listed for 48 and I think I dropped the price once or twice, but I got an offer for 30 and I did accept it. I was, again, I was ready to get this into somebody's hands and I'm just, I'm really excited to move this on because I do absolutely love this dress. Truth be told, if this was my size, I probably would have kept it. It's, it's my flavor of funky. You know what I'm saying? So I had it listed for $48. I got an offer for $30. I had it for about a year with a $1 cost of the bins. This brought my profit to $25.60. And I hope the buyer absolutely loves it. It's just, it's just such a unique piece. Next up, this is a big one. So this is from Joss, J-A-A-S-E. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right. So this is a pretty high-low dress. It's got a very full skirt, a tie waist little flutter sleeves. I love these colors. It's very summery. It's very like brunch by the seashore. Try to get that, <laughs> try to contain this skirt. It's a very voluminous skirt. So it's just one of those things that unfortunately is going to get a little bit crushed in shipping, but we try to do it as tidy as possible. So this is a brand I've I found a couple pieces of. I don't really know like where it's sold. I think it actually might be a boutique brand. Uh, but maybe a higher-end boutique brand. The things that I found are, you know, pretty decent quality and very, very cute. They all have these kind of funky prints or really interesting fabrics. So, you know, it's not something that you're going to be making a huge amount of money on. It's, I don't think they retail for all that much. I want to say that this probably retailed in that, like, $70 or $80 range, which is still kind of expensive, but when you're dealing with you know buying to resell you're generally aiming for that like higher price point especially when you're dealing with something as bulky as this but i had this guy listed for about two months and i'll tell you i had so much interest in this unsurprising it is very very cute sorry guys it's street cleaning right now so this thing has passed my house like 10 times and i apologize if you can hear that in the background so I had this thing listed for $34 and just like as you're sourcing, if you do see this, you're gonna be getting probably between like 20 and 35 on, Joss, on these Joss pieces. So, you know, don't go paying $10 for it. You know, just make sure you're kind of protecting that profit margin. If that doesn't work in your desired profit margin, like don't pick them up. Uh, so I had this listed for $34 for about two months. I got an offer for $25. This was another Depop sale. And with a $1 cost, uh, that brought my profit to $22.40. Again, Depop not charging those seller fees, which is, you know, exciting as a seller. I still question, uh, I still question how buyers are taking that. I would, again, I've been in marketing for 20 years. I've studied consumer behavior. I know exactly how sensitive buyers are to like additional fees on top of what they're paying for. I mean, I see what happens when you charge for shipping versus free shipping. Like it doesn't matter, like the total will be the same, but if the shipping is free, it's a mental game. So I'm interested to see, although, you know, Depop has picked up a little bit for me. I'll take it. Next up here, this was a funky little find. So this sweatshirt is from a designer called Poil Cécine. And it's got these embroidered quotes on the top, which seems to be very like popular right now. It's kind of that lingua franca style. If you're not familiar with lingua franca, I highly recommend you get familiar with lingua franca. Very, very high end brand. You, if you were to see it in the thrift, you would pick it up because the tag is like big and bold and like looks high end. You, you would not miss it. But like their their sweatshirts sell for $150. Their cashmere sweaters are like three, four hundred dollars. But this is very much in that vein. So I picked this up. I didn't know the brand. Turns out I believe this is a Japanese brand. But I thought it would go, you know, based on style alone. And sure enough, it did. I do love picking up these kind of elevated sweatshirt pieces. I mean, I love having the kind of trend pieces, the, the wedding guest dresses, the bridesmaids. I love having like the cocktail dresses and stuff. But at the end of the day, the vast majority of us, this is the kind of stuff we wear from day to day. So I always love picking up these kind of elevated sweats because you know, they're, they're everyday wear. This is what gets wear. Don't get me wrong, cocktail attire is like the thing to buy secondhand, but if you can find your everyday wear on the secondhand market, it's great. 
But either way, I, let me know if any of you have ever found anything by this designer. I'm very interested. I had never heard of it. Again, it just, it felt nice and it looked nice and I kind of picked it up on a, on a gut read. So I had this listed for about two months and I had it listed for 32. I want to say retail, the ones that I found, it was kind of hard to find these online. Again, because I'm pretty sure that this is like a, a Japanese brand. But I want to say that they retailed for like a hundred, around a hundred dollars. So I have this listed for $32. My sidekick sent an offer for 28, which was accepted. And with the $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $22 and 40 cents. All right, next up here, we've got another bundle. And this is a cute little kind of twist front tank from Wilfred Free. Wilfred Free is part of Wilfred, which is one of the in-house brands at Aritzia. And this is kind of a basic, so it's not gonna go for too terribly much, but Wilfred is for sure a name you wanna keep your eyes out for. Wilfred makes those effortless pants, which are just the dreamiest trousers. They're made of this beautiful Japanese crepe, and it has a drape unlike any other fabric I've ever seen other than like silk crepe. It really feels like silk crepe. Uh, she also picked up this gorgeous swimsuit from Andy. I knew this would go quick. This is one of their classic silhouettes, but I think this was a limited edition color. This is called the Tulum suit, like Tulum, Mexico, and it's got, you know, just base, a basic kind of scoop front, and the back is kind of low with these nice crisscross bands. I, I just love it. I knew that this was gonna go quick because this print is just divine. But Andy Swim is one of those swim brands that I urge you to keep your eyes out for. It sells for pretty penny, I wanna say. Most of their swimsuits retail in the 120 to like $170 range. I will say they are the, I love them. I literally have three Andy swimsuits and I recommend them to like everybody that will listen to me. I'm some, you know, I struggle to find swimsuits because I am endowed, um, you know, like it, it's tough to find anything, certainly nothing with like cups is going to be in my repertoire. And I always say they have this one swimsuit in particular, and I can't remember the name of it, I'll put it down here. But if you are a mom, if you are a mom and you are like going to the pool with your kids and you need something that's like no nonsense, it's gonna hold you in, you know, you're not gonna be like flashing the world. They have this one swimsuit that has this like snap up front. It goes like, you can wear it like all the way up. It's generous over the shoulders. It's got like really great support here, which again, important for me. But I would recommend that to anybody with children. I cannot imagine a more like secure suit. Play games, you can play volleyball. It's gonna keep you safe and secure and it's gonna look cute. And if you want it to be a little bit like, you know, sexier, you can kind of like unsnap some of the buttons and show a little, you know, show a little of the girls, but it's just the best swimsuit. And I, you know, again, I've just been so impressed with the quality of them that, you know, I'm not somebody that goes out and buys like 10 swimsuits a year. I wanna buy like one or two good swimsuits and I, wanna, I want them to last for a long time. So I do spend on my swim and uh, I can't recommend Andy enough. Anyway. These two came through, This the total cost on the two of them, no discount was $92, the bundle price was 78, she offered me $60, which I gladly accepted, with a $2 cost from the bins, this brought my profit to $46. The Wilford shirt I had had for a couple months, but the Andy suit I think I had only put up like two days before that got picked up. I'm not surprised, I knew, I knew that that would go quick. Just the most beautiful fabric. Next up here, we've got a couple of men's pieces. The first thing here is this John Marvados tie. This is brand new with tags. I believe I found this on the same day that I found a John Marvados leather jacket in the bins. I'm still, I'm still reeling from that, by the way. Since I've yet to figure out how best to pack ties, you're just going to roll this in there with me. But John Marvados is one of those brands, like if you're unfamiliar, he's a, he's a designer. And he's very much like rock and roll. You know, he just has that aesthetic that's got, it's very edgy. In fact, his flagship store in New York is in the location of CBGB, which was like a legendary punk club. It was sacrilege that CBGB closed, but I think everybody was pretty pleased that if any designer was gonna go there, it was gonna be John Barbados, because it's very much his style. 
So definitely keep your eyes out for that name as you're sourcing. I would say comfortably pay up if you find one of the leather jackets. I don't care what the price is, you're gonna pick that up. You're gonna pick that up for $50, like you will get, you will get your money back. So I had this listed for just four days at $34. It popped through as a full price sale with a $1 cost of the bins. This brought me, to, uh, this brought me a profit of $29.86. And I hope he loves it. John Barbados is just one of those brands that it's it kind of exists outside of trends. It's not trendy at all. It's just very much like an aesthetic that people, you know, like think Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp dresses in a lot of John Barbados stuff. That kind of style, like rock star. It's rock star. It's rock star clothing. Next up, now this is something that's not for everybody and it's not a huge price seller, but if you're getting it at the bins, I pick them up. I cannot urge you to check condition enough though. I've found a lot of pairs of these that have been just like worked to death. These are from Chubbies and these bright pattern Chubbies, they have the whatever it is, five inch inseam. These sell so quick for me. I knew that these would go quickly, but I, I figured it would go pretty quickly, especially pink and green. Um, it's just that kind of bright, preppy colorway that some guys love. But I have sold a lot of chubbies. Like you're never gonna get much more than like 25 to $30. So bear that in mind as you're sourcing. You know, if you're getting them for a dollar, $2, $3, that's fine. You know, I wouldn't go paying up for a pair of chubbies. But the thing is like chubbies, anytime I've ever had them, they sell in like a week. I guess the patterns are collectible. I'm not quite sure. This isn't necessarily my world. If anybody is familiar, please let me know down below. But people love them and they sell very, very quickly. So this I had listed for $29. Again, that's about what you're gonna see on these. And I had it listed for just six days and it popped through as a full price sale. With a $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $22.20. So, hope he loves them. They are, you know, they're great quality and those in particular were in like perfect condition. I would, like I said, when you pick them up, just make sure you're checking the lining because nobody's gonna want a pair of swim trunks with a ripped lining. Next up, this is one that my mom found actually. This is vintage J Jill. And this is, I mean, no brainer to pick this kind of stuff up. I know a lot of people don't pick up J Jill. Actually, let me know down below. How do you do with J Jill? It's one of my favorite brands to pick up. I love picking it up because it is, you know, again, I'm never gonna get a huge price on it, but the quality is always like outstanding. The fabrics are always really nice. The styles are very classic. I do really well with it. So let me know down below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you pick it up a lot? Do you, are you selective with what you pick up? Uh, let me know. But this is vintage, I wanna say from the 90s. It's black velvet and it's got an integrated shelf bra, which is always nice. Classic little camisole with adjustable straps. I can't remember if she found this at one of her bins locations back east or if she got this at a dollar day, but either way, I think she paid a dollar for it. She was either a dollar or less than a dollar because her bins location is something ridiculous, like a dollar 29 per pound. Like if you find a lightweight silk piece at a dollar 29 a pound, you're paying like a dime for it, literally. But I think this, I, I feel like this was a dollar day. I could be losing my mind here. But yeah, J Jill, I will pick up most things. As long as it's not like extra small, like I do try to only pick up like large, extra large, one X, two X, but. I just love it. I just, it's so expensive to buy it. Like it's a very expensive brand. It's in that like soft surroundings kind of Chico's price point. And you know, you'll get 20 to $30 on most pieces. So like if you pick it up, just make sure you're in that price range. So I had this listed for one and a half months at $29 and got an offer for 24, which I gladly accepted with a $1 cost or less. That brought my profit to $19.34. And again, it's in great condition. Those kind of built-in bra tops really do sell well. I also want you to keep your eyes out for a brand called Classy Network. That's classy with a K. Those are like integrated bra tops. They, they call them the Brahmies, which I hate the name, but they do resell very, very well. I found a few pieces. It's in that same vein you know, tank tops, bodysuits, whatever, with built-in bras, they're great. Next up here, this is a shirt from Wild Fang. Wild Fang is a, sh is a brand for sure to be on the lookout for. Now this is one of their more unusual pieces in that it's long sleeve. For the most part, people are really looking for either their short sleeve button down, they always have, they have like really kind of cool prints. 
So short sleeve kind of menswear inspired button downs or their boiler suits or rompers. In particular, their boiler suits and rompers sell for a pretty penny. You will see them going, I wanna say that they retail in the 150 to $180 range. They're very, they're nicely made, but they're very, very expensive. They will resell between like 80 and $120. So keep your eyes out for it. And they will sell fast because they're in pretty high demand. Let me know down below if you've ever found anything from Wild Fang. What did you find? How much did you pay for it? How much did you sell it for? I want to know. But I am always excited to find this. This is the first time I've ever found it in the bins and the second time I've ever found it, period. But yeah, definitely a brand to have on your radar as you go out sourcing. So I had this listed for just two weeks and I had it listed for $35, got an offer for 27, which I did accept with the $1 cost of the bins has brought my profit to $20.60. And I'll tell you, I had a lot of interest. I had a lot of likes on this. I had a lot of views on this. So definitely a brand, definitely a brand to have on your radar going out of order here. So next up is this great Madewell sweatshirt. This is like a bubble sleeve sweatshirt in this pretty like dusty mauve. It's nice and cozy, comfy. It is a 2XL, again, I, I don't pick up everything from Madewell, but I do pick up for sure these larger sizes because they are hard to come by on the secondhand market. And they are made very, very well. This is garment dyed, so it's got that like interesting kind of, I don't know if you can see this on the camera. If you are, you, if you are unfamiliar with what garment dye means, and it's like once you understand it, it'll make a little bit more sense when you're looking at it. So typically when you are buying something, the cloth is dyed and then you know cut and turned into a garment. When something is garment dyed, it's basically created with the raw textile and then once it's completed as a garment, it's dyed. Like a telltale sign for a garment dyed garment. <laughs> Seems repetitive, but it's correct. Uh, when you see the seams on a garment dyed garment, you'll usually see a little bit lighter because less of that is getting absorbed because it's tighter packed. So if you think about where like a collar is attached to a sweatshirt, it's generally going to be like stitched down. It'll be a couple layers of fabric really tightly packed. So that, because it's so tightly packed, will not absorb as much of the color as like the flat part, like the flat open part of the garment. So you're gonna have that variation from like body of the garment to the seam part of the garment. That's usually how you can tell a garment dyed piece, just at a glance. The one thing I will urge you is if you do buy something that is garment dyed, be aware that the color tends to be a little bit less stable than it is if it's dyed just on the bolt of fabric. So make sure that you are cautious your first few times washing it. And just know that when you buy something garment dyed, it is meant to like age. So as you wash it and as you dry it, it should age beautifully. You should get a little bit more contrast on those seams. Um, I really like the look of garment dyed. Just know that that's what that's all about. In case you didn't know, that is what garment dyed means. So I had this listed at $34 and I had it for three or four months. Not surprising, those three or four months were summer. And this is a nice kind of heavyweight sweatshirt. So we are coming into fall, so it makes sense for this to move now. I had it listed for $34 for three to four months. Popped through as a full price sale at $34 with a $1 cost. At the bins, this brought my profit to $26.20. And I hope she loves it. Next up here, now this is something I will pick up every time I see it. This is a vintage nightgown. There were like no tags in this. There was no like contents tag. There was no maker tag. So I don't know how old this is. I don't think that this would be like 50s or before. Just going by some of the stitches. I'm gonna guess that this was maybe like 80s, kind of made to look a little bit older because it is kind of like a Victorian style. It's got these like little crochet lace insets, etc. But these kind of things, I mean, I get so much action on these. Like I, I did not have this listed for very long and I had so many likes, so many inquiries on it. And I just, I will just pick up vintage nightgowns anytime I see them. I, in particular, I love to find the ones from the 20s. If you can find the ones from the 20s that are like silk 
or the ones from the 50s that are lacy and kind of long. I mean, they're hard to find in good shape, but every once in a blue moon, and this is like my favorite kind of day at the bins, every once in a blue moon, I'll find like a raw donation and you can tell it's all from like the same closet and I'll find like a pile of vintage slips. It's happened once or twice in my life and it is like so exciting. Those kind of raw, like I love finding raw donations when you find good stuff, like that's such a treat anytime it happens, but when you find a raw donation that's like vintage clothing, that's the way to my heart right there. That is the way to my heart. But I had this listed for just four days at $34. And to be totally honest, I wasn't sure how well this would do because I couldn't like accurately date it. Usually I like to put a little bit more information about like the era that it's in, but I just, this one kind of stumped me a little bit. So I had it listed for $32. I had it listed for four days. I got an offer for $26, which I gladly accepted. With a $1 cost of the bins, this brought my profit to $21.62. And I hope she loves it. That's such a cool little piece. Next up, okay, so this is a brand I want you to keep your eyes out for, for sure. So this is a brand called Darker Waves. Darker Waves is a brand that is sold at Dolls Kill. And I will say, if you are somebody who uses stock photos, do be very cautious, because Dolls Kill is very kind of aggressive at taking down their stock photos. I think this is called the Eden Mini Dress. It's sheer, and it's got like a mask and a hood. So Darker Waves is kind of like an industrial goth type style. And I don't know how else to describe it. That's exactly what the style is. It's in the family of like a rave type garment, but they make these really like interesting kind of alternative garments. So this is a mini dress, it's sheer, it's got two little slits up the front, and then it's got this like oversized hood with a face mask that comes up. This is a brand that is very highly sought after. You're not like, don't go paying $10 for something like this. You're it's. It doesn't sell for all that much, but this is something that they only have the long version still available. So once things go out of production from brands like this, they become highly covetable on the secondhand market. And even if they're in, you know, even if they're still for sale, they will still sell very quickly. It's one of those things like a mod cloth, like a unique vintage, where there's just not a ton of brands that make this kind of clothing. So the brands that do make it are, you know, in high demand by people in that community. So I will always pick up Darker Waves pieces when I see them. They will feel like if you're looking through the bins, they're gonna feel flimsy. Everything I've ever found looks like shredded. The fabric feels really thin, but that is the style that is like by design. So when you feel something like that, if you, if you see something that's like shredded, but looks like intentionally shredded, pick it up, check it out. You never know what you're gonna find. This in particular was on the ground when I found it. And it like, I'm sure people picked it up and thought it was just like a destroyed t-shirt and threw it out. But I was very excited to figure out that it was not a destroyed t-shirt <laughs> on the ground. Another one that as soon as I listed it, I had so much interest in it. I got like 10 offers over the course of the time that I had this listed from Depop. None of them came through, which you know, is just kind of how Depop works. But I only had it listed for five days. So that'll give you an idea of how in demand these guys are. I had it listed for $36, uh, just five days, got an offer for $33. Uh, which I did accept with a $1 cost of the bins. This brought me to a profit of $23.44. Absolutely positively love finding darker wave pieces. Everything I've ever found from them has sold under a week. So definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. Just know that the sale prices aren't gonna be huge, but if you find them, pick them up. It's one of those things that's like in and out of your closet in days. And finally here, this cute skirt. I've had this for so long and another one that I've had just so much interest in. This is from a brand called Never Fully Dressed, as in you're never fully dressed without a smile. Everybody feel free to break into song. We all love Annie. But this is called the Jasper skirt and they make this skirt. This is like one of their signature styles. They make the skirt in a bunch of different prints and it's really cute. It's like wraps. It's a wrap skirt, fully wrap, and it's kind of a slim line. So it, it looks like a midi like pencil skirt when it's on. The more solid skirts do sell very quickly. I don't know if I would recommend picking it up. I mean, certainly if you see it, pick it up, try it. You know, just make sure that you're sourcing at a number that you're comfortable with. In fact, like, let me know. Have you ever found never fully dressed have you found a jasper skirt how fast did it sell for you i'm interested to hear other people's experience with it because it is lovely and the quality is very nice 
I think the thing that kind of held this one back was the print, you know, was the fact that it was a, you know, mixed cheetah print. It's just a little bit more of a difficult to style look than some of the other patterns. They have a lot of florals and a lot of solids, but let me know if you have ever had experience with this brand. Let me know how you did. Anyway, so this one I had listed for 10 or 11 months and I had it listed for $42 and at the time, so I, I've lowered the price on this and at the time when I first listed it, most of the sold comps were in that like $45 to $60 range. Again, I think the thing that held this back was the print because I didn't see anything else with this like tricolor look to it. But anyway, so I had it at 42 at the time of sale, got an offer for $30, I was ready to move this on. And with the $1 cost of the bins, this brought me to $27.72. Still a great profit. And a very, very, very cute skirt. But that is it guys, that is the shipment for today. I am running so, so late, so I need to get going. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me while I literally get my work done. Thank you for hanging out with me while I'm catching up for my crazy weekend. I'm glad that I was able to take a little bit of time to hang out with my sister and niece. It, we just had a lot of fun. But guys, if you had fun, please consider leaving a like or comment on the video. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you along on this journey. But without further ado, guys, have the most beautiful weekend. Happy hunting, and I will see you in the next one.